Hello, friends. It's the Carnivore Rabbi. We're here to meet, pray, and love. And I'm getting ready for Passover. And I've been talking a lot about the carnivore diet with friends and family. And I realized something. When you Google the carnivore diet, you will come up with a lot of different studies, things from the Mayo Clinic and from other Healthline and so forth. And you'll get all these studies mostly talking about how dangerous it is. It raises your cholesterol. You don't get any vitamin C. What about all that saturated fat? So you come away with a real negative view of the carnivore diet because you're seeing all these studies suggesting how bad it is and how other diets are better. On the other hand, if you go to YouTube and you type in carnivore diet, you'll come across many hundreds, even thousands of testimonials, both on YouTube videos and in the comments. And these testimonials are extraordinary. They talk about the weight people have lost, sleep apnea gone, skin cleared up, autoimmune illnesses reversed. The, the comments and the stories are extraordinary. So who or what do you believe? How do you tell the truth? How do you tell truth from falsehood? I confess in many areas of life, I often turn to studies. I like research. I love science. I like learning from evidence and from rigorous studies. But in the realm of nutrition, I trust anecdotes and personal stories much more. Now, what's wrong with studies? First of all, it's very difficult to do nutritional studies uh, because there are so many other factors that shape people's nutrition than just what they eat. There's their stress, there's the environment, there's the air they breathe. There's so many factors. Secondly, people often lie or they don't remember. This is legion. People say, what did you eat three weeks ago? Did you eat meat? Or you think, oh, maybe I had a burger from Burger King with fries and a Coke. And you say, yeah, I did eat meat. But <laughs> you're, you're, first of all, you may not remember correctly. Second, you're not accounting for all the other things that you ate with that meat. So the kind of reporting that goes into nutritional studies is abysmal. Uh, e even researchers will tell you this. Third problem is so many nutrition studies have agendas. This is many people I know watch documentaries, certain vegan documentaries on Netflix and so forth. You see who funds these documentaries. Oftentimes it's like the Beyond Meat companies. It's, it's certain coalitions of groups that very clearly have an agenda. And you often don't know it. Maybe they'll say it in some tiny footnote, but you don't know. The studies are very often biased. Fourth part is the studies are often not random enough or large enough to really capture the variety of human beings. They just don't make sense. They, lean mass hyper responders is a good example. There are certain people who have very high cholesterol and yet they're in wonderful shape. Studies don't know what to make of that. It's like trying to fit everybody in a certain box. That's what studies do. And especially in the realm of nutrition, there are many other problems with studies. Look, there's several videos have been made about this. Dr. Barry has several, but they're very difficult to do good, proper, insightful studies in nutrition. Now, personal stories are not perfect either. Okay, this is important to understand. Sometimes people don't remember correctly. Sometimes people just don't tell the truth. This is true. Uh, but I find personal stories, especially when people are talking about the carnivore diet, without being solicited, without being paid to, to do. People are speaking from the heart and they're telling the truth. I see that over and over again. And remember, patterns in the stories that people tell about their experience on the carnivore diet. These people don't know each other. So many of the stories I've heard talk about reducing sleep apnea or eliminating it. The, 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 the people that report this, they haven't coordinated with one another and say, oh, we're going to promote the carnivore diet so we can make some extra money and get some attention by saying it eliminated sleep apnea. That doesn't happen. So there is a honesty in the stories that you can tell. We human beings have honed our ability to assess people's honesty and, and their character over the years. We can read body language, facial expressions, and so forth. When I see people talking about their experience on the carnivore diet, you can sense that they're being honest and truthful and open. I, I, again, I can't prove it, but you see it in their faces, in their eyes. 
Second thing that's so important about personal stories is that we can relate to them. We hear our own issues, our own challenges echoed in somebody else's story. And that speaks to us. You know, studies where, you know, they, they really gloss over the individual and they just are looking at sheer numbers, they don't resonate with us. They don't inspire action. The point of studying nutrition is so that we can live and act in a better way. Studies don't give us that. Personal stories do. We see ourselves in another person and we're motivated to act. We're inspired by them. That's really powerful. I bet all of us here have been inspired by at least one or two or three or four carnivores. Yes, the medical information and the doctor and the studies are important, but the stories really resonate. The third thing is that I actually think it's much easier to manipulate studies than it is to manipulate personal stories. You hear so many stories on carnivore. People don't have to write into the comments. Nobody's paying them to do that. But you read that and there's really, there's no financial incentive for them to do that. Whereas there are enormous financial incentives for studies to prove certain things. So there's, a, there's almost a more genuine honesty in the multiplicity of stories. Fourth thing, and this is very important, is that if a study doesn't produce the result that the researcher or the funder wanted, they can just bury the study. This famously happened with Ansel Keys, who is really one of the key people responsible for the focus on lowering fat and demonizing cholesterol. There was a study that he saw, he oversaw, that found that patients who had higher cholesterol lived longer. That study was buried for 25 years. It was only randomly found, I think, in 2015 or something like that. It's astounding. And this happens so much more than we even know. What, when we remember when there's smoke, there's fire, occasionally we hear a story about a study that was suppressed. I bet for every one story we hear, there are probably 10 others that were repressed. So what do we do with all that? That doesn't mean we throw science and studies out. Dr. Sean Baker is doing some incredible research, and I want more research into the carnivore diet. But we also can remember that personal stories make all the difference. They can inspire us to act. They can guide us. We have to do it on our own. Our experience is going to be different than other people's. But continue to hear the stories, continue to get inspired, and continue to grow and thrive so you can embrace and live with the proper human diet.